because what you chase will always elude you, aka what I call staying in delusion land. Alright, I'm gonna pull up in the Lambo in 10. Holy fuck, this is epic. Life is a journey. Life is a journey. Life is a journey. Life is a What's up my friend, this is an audio recording of a thread that I put out on Twitter not too long ago called How I Easily Manifest $33,000 Days Profit. So this is my step-by-step -step process. I've used this six-step process to manifest all types of things, from a 3.87 GPA from one of the top universities in Canada after getting straight C's in high school, to 50k days consistently, multiple successful businesses in all types of niches, 500k investment in under 24 hours for a real estate client, top floor apartments, new identities, amazing adventures, free experiences, an apprenticeship with an eight-figure marketer, and on and on and on. I don't say any of that to brag. All of that stuff is honestly cool, but none of it really matters because no material possessions could ever measure what my soul's worth. Shout out to Nipsey Hussle for that line. Facts. The reason I mention all the above is because I just offer it as proof. Because the method that I'm going to share in this recording works 100% of the time, if followed correctly. The only time it doesn't work is when I get too cocky, fuck up the steps, and get in my own way, which does happen. And the most epic part of this process is you don't have to believe in this process to see results. We don't believe, we know. Once implemented, you too will experience the results and develop a sense of knowing, and that's when life will truly become an epic adventure. So, are you ready to get into it? Let's do it. But first, a quick disclaimer. I'm not one of these manifestation folks who sits around all day jerking off to Lamborghinis, worshipping crystals, reciting cheesy affirmations in the mirror. All that shit is cool. Do you. No judgments. It's just not my style. I am practical and simply do what works. So even though what I'm about to reveal is proven by quantum physics, yogis, top athletes, mystics, spiritual gurus, and tech billionaires, I don't really give a fuck. Even if it wasn't, it is. I'd still do it because it works. So let's now finally get into the step-by-step -step process. This is going to be quite long, and these six steps must be practiced in order. So if you don't have 40 to 50 minutes to consume this now, then I highly recommend turning this off and coming back to it when you do have that time. So let's get started. Like I said, this is a six step process. We'll be taking it one step at a time. The first step is to activate God awareness consciousness. Now there's two ways to play the game of life. Way one is through person consciousness. This is when you believe the limited human you see in the mirror is you. I call this human your character and you attach your identity to his or her thoughts body, emotions, preferences, struggles, stories, and labels. This is how the majority of the world goes through life. And chances are, it's what you've been doing too. Most people try to manifest from this state a person consciousness by reciting affirmations, visualizing, and acting as if. But it doesn't work because you place too much importance on yourself and keep getting in your own way. Luckily, there's another way. Way number two is what I call God consciousness. Now, this is just a label. It could just as easily be labeled witness consciousness or presence or whatever the fuck you please. Way to God consciousness is when you view the limited human you see in the mirror, not as you, but as the character you're playing. And you no longer attach yourself to his or her thoughts, body, emotions, preferences, struggles, stories, and labels. Instead, you move from person to presence and activate the witness inside you. The relaxed, detached presence or awareness that simply observes the life of your character like an independent third party with zero judgment or attachment. This switch from person consciousness to God consciousness is the first move you have to make. Otherwise, you'll be too close to the life of your character and will keep blocking your own blessings because you care too much about the results. This will result in you fucking up the whole process. Plus, you won't be able to tap into your full creative powers. So the question is, how exactly do you make this switch? It seems hard, doesn't it? Fortunately, it's not. It's actually quite easy, and you access the state all the time without ever realizing it, especially when you're in flow or in the zone. So what I would like you to do right now is to simply close your eyes right now, take a deep 
inhale, and on the exhale, for just two to five seconds, consciously drop all labels, thoughts, emotions, attachments, and just fully let go of everything like you're dead and you're relaxing back into presence. Do it now if you can. After taking that two to five seconds, chances are you may have started to feel a greater depth of stillness. That's presence, the part of you that is everybody and everything. Now imagine observing yourself from outside yourself like an independent third party. Simply observe the thoughts running through your character's mind, the emotions your character is experiencing, the circumstances your character is going through with zero judgment or attachment. Instead, use a relaxed awareness, like you're looking at the thoughts, emotions, circumstances of a complete stranger. Do it now. That's you getting in touch with the witness inside you. This state of complete presence and simple observation or witnessing of what your character is going through is what I mean by God consciousness. And this is the state you need to get familiar with. No longer are you living life from the first person, aka going through life as your character. Instead, we're living life through the third person. You're watching your character go through life just like you do when you're watching a movie on the big screen. So to help make this state habitual, I recommend a few things. The first thing that I recommend is you take up meditation and simply observe the thoughts and emotions and irks of your character with zero judgment or attachment for just 20 minutes a day. The second thing I recommend is you download a mindfulness bell from the app store that's called Insight Timer. With this app, you can set a bell to go off every hour or whenever you please. Once this bell goes off, take a deep breath, drop everything for two to five seconds, and ground yourself back into the presence. Also, another pro tip with this app is you can set the bell to go off at random times as well. This is an easy way to train and test yourself. If the bell goes off and you feel startled, you know you're operating from person consciousness because you're too sucked into his or her circumstances. That's why the bell startled you. If, on the other hand, the bell goes off and you don't get startled, you know you're operating from God consciousness because you're in a state of presence and the bell is simply arising within that same field. So that's point two. The third thing that I recommend is you start referring to the human you see in the mirror as the character you're playing in this video game of life. Don't identify so closely with it. Create some sort of separation between you, the witness or God consciousness or presence and the character that you see in the mirror. It is not the real you. Just the meat you're wearing, just like when you're cold and put on a hoodie, you don't become the hoodie. Same shit here. God consciousness or presence put on a body to experience life as a human. You are not the body. You are God consciousness. Now, before you get all crazy with this, there is no need to get this perfect. I personally fuck up and slip from God consciousness to person consciousness a million times a day. So cut your character some slack. All you need to do with step one is to simply activate God consciousness and set up the simple habits I discussed above so you can get comfortable viewing your character from outside yourself. Once you do this, move on to step two. Step two is to neutralize your character's environment. From a place of God consciousness, which is the independent, third-party, relaxed awareness, you want to observe with zero judgment everything that goes on in the life of your character. And then you want to delete all the negatives or as much as you can to neutralize your character's environment and restore his or her energy or power. So some things to observe and delete from your character's life may include news, politics, destructive self-talk, shitty friends, toxic media, negative people on your social media, porn, struggle rap music, bullshit R&B music that's just simping 24-7 over some broad, and hustle culture. Now, I wish this wasn't required. My character's favorite rappers are struggle rappers, but your life is at stake. You can either choose CNN or to live out the greatest adventure known to man. So what's it going to be? Hopefully, the choice is clear. Now, the question you may have is, why exactly do we need to get rid of all this stuff? The reason is because all these things are carefully engineered by the powers that be to make you unconsciously manifest the reality that does not serve you, but them. If you don't believe me, I have a simple question. Why does almost everybody, 
aka the masses, who religiously follow all the above inputs end up with the exact same following outputs. In other words, why do they all end up broke, depressed, obese, anxious, diabetic, lifeless, and divorced? Come on now, you don't need a fancy calculator to see the math is adding up clear as day here. The results of all the above inputs are all around you. Just wake up a little bit and look around. Now, another reminder is you want to neutralize the above inputs from a place of God consciousness. If you try to eliminate these inputs from person consciousness, you'll get emotionally invested and the powers that be will consume your energy dry, so you definitely don't want to do that. So that's step two, is simply to take inventory of your life and some of the things your character is busy doing and really evaluate if those activities are serving you. If they're not, eliminate, and if you can't eliminate, drastically cut down. So that's step number two. Step number three is from the state of God consciousness, you want to ask yourself, what do I want to create? So the powers that be are engineered to convince you that the world is full of lack and you are not a creator, but a slave who must worship the man, jerk off to Instagram girls you'll never bone, let alone have the balls to approach and pay your dooms dues like a dummy. But in reality, it's all bullshit. All lies designed to control you. This is why in step two, we neutralized all those destructive forces so they can no longer run your character like a slave. Once you get rid of the inputs from step two, you'll start feeling so much more joy, love, power, limitless possibilities, confidence, gratitude for no reason. Because this is your natural godlike state that the powers that be have hijacked. So from this newfound natural state, you want to ask yourself, what do I want to create? Or you can ask the following question. If failure didn't exist and I could do and be anything, what would I want to experience? Now, don't just answer this question half-heartedly now. Fuck that. Go out in nature for an hour with a journal. Relax. Take a bottle of wine with you, a few of your favorite snacks, chill out and unwind, then do a couple of rounds of breathing or Wim Hof to clear away all tension, and then ask yourself the above questions. A quick note is there is no lack or limits. You literally have God inside you and can make anything happen. After all, you've created all you see around you. You just forgot. If you created all this, what's creating a couple million dollars in comparison? Absolutely nothing. So dream up your new creations. Be big and be bold. If you could truly create and experience anything, what would it be? Would you create a 50k year salary, wrinkles on your forehead, a dick that doesn't work, layers of belly fat, and a wife that doesn't want to fuck you, let alone look at you? Or would you create a life that fulfills you with unlimited money, great health, rich relationships, amazing adventures? Obviously, the latter, you're probably thinking. So do it. Quit letting the powers that be manifest the former reality for you. Take control of your creative power. Stop being a pussy who thinks if you dream too big, you won't get it and will fail. Remember, failure doesn't really exist. It's just a bullshit concept put inside your head so you buy into a universe of lack. But if you simply stop believing those thoughts and you just look around in nature, all you will see is such beauty, such magnificence, such awe, and such wonder. Zero fucking lack. So tap into this natural abundance and create the dreams you want to manifest into reality. Make them bold and make them big so you have a reason to leave bed in the morning. Step four is you want to shoot your dreams down and bring them to eye level. So after you've dreamed up your new creations from the detached state of God consciousness, your character is going to be juiced with excitement. He's going to be thinking, I can't wait to experience this. I have so much energy. I'm going to hustle my face off. I'm going to chase this dream and nobody can stop me. But you want to stop. You want to hold on because this isn't it. Slow down, take a deep breath, relax, and listen to this next part carefully. Dreams don't come true because you've been conditioned to put them on a pedestal and chase after them like a slave. Why shouldn't you put dreams on a pedestal and chase after them? Well, let me ask you. Remember that girl in high school who you were simping hard for and wanting to be with so bad? What was her name? She was the one that was a goddess in your eyes, right? The one you chased and pursued for months on end. The one you wanted to be with more than anything else in the world. But the question is, did you end up getting her? 
the answer, if you're honest, is probably a version of, nope, she started dating the captain of the football team or whatever. And this is because you should never put what you want on a pedestal. There's a line by Drake that goes something along the lines of, pussy is just pussy and I get it when I need it. Yeah. In other words, zero pedestal. Now, you're probably thinking you already know this already. But my question is, if you know it, then why are you still putting your dreams on a pedestal? For it's the same principle. The more you desire something, the lower your chances are of getting it. The less you give a fuck, the easier it is to get. And I know you experienced this. Have you ever been on a sales call and absolutely needed the money and you needed the sales call to close? In those situations, did the prospect close? Chances are they didn't. On the other hand, have you ever been swimming in money, done a sales call without giving a fuck about getting the money because you didn't need the money? What happened on those calls? Chances are you closed with ease. You closed without trying. For it's the same principle at play. So to actually achieve your dreams, you have to take them off the pedestal and bring them to eye level. Society conditions you to assume the value of one, but attaches the value 10 to your dreams. But in no world does one equals 10. This is why you've probably been chasing your dreams for years now, but ain't shit changed. You have to make one equal one to make your dreams come true. And you do that by knocking your dreams off the pedestal your character is conditioned to put them on. How exactly do you do this? By living in God consciousness and viewing your character's dreams with indifference. Meaning, you, God consciousness, are happy if the dreams or intentions materialize for your character. You're also happy if they don't. It's really no big deal because you're already whole and complete and at peace. Now, you may think this is hard to do, but from a place of God consciousness, this is easy to do because you are not attached to the life of your character. You're already at peace, whole, filling yourself internally with all that you need. This is why step number one is so fucking important because otherwise you'll get in your own way and keep sabotaging yourself by putting money, pussy, great health, amazing adventures on a pedestal and running after them. Remember, Nothing is above you because you are truly all of it. The presence that is inside you is the same presence that makes up the entire universe. Zero separation. All illusion. Now, what's next? If you're not supposed to chase your dreams, what the hell are you supposed to do all day? This is what brings us to step five. Step five is to live your dreams today. Most of society is stuck chasing their dreams. When you chase a dream, what you think you are doing is starting from point A, which is where you are, chasing your dream over days, weeks, months, years, which is time, and eventually getting to point Z, which is where your dreams resides. But that's bullshit. Time is an illusion, which means there's no past or future, only the now. So if all you're doing is chasing in the now, then you'll forever remain behind your dream and in lack of it because the now is all there is. External circumstances will change to make it seem like things are changing. You'll grow older with age, make and lose friends, get a lot of busy work done. But since your mental focal point is fixated on chasing in the now, that's all you'll ever be doing. Your dream will always be ahead of you and you'll always be behind, running after it and chasing it with all your heart but never getting it because what you chase will always elude you. This is why I do not chase dreams. Instead, I live my dreams daily in the now. How exactly do you live your dreams now? By getting in a state of knowing and staying there no matter what. You may be wondering, what is a state of knowing? Well, let me explain. There's three roads people take to manifest their dreams. Road one is when people desire their dream but don't do anything. Road two is when people believe in their dream and set and pursue goals and work hard to get it. Road three is when you know the dream is already achieved and you align your consciousness to your dream and trust and move with the flow of life and let time catch up to your consciousness. Now, most of us have been conditioned to take road one, which doesn't work, or road two, which can work and is the road money, Twitter, and a lot of entrepreneurs push. But in all honesty, this road is full of a lot of struggle, a lot of setback, a lot of sacrifice, and far too often just results in mediocre success. The ones who become massively successful, the billionaires, the elite athletes, the spiritual masters, the ones who impact the world at large, they all take road three. And you don't have to take my word for this either. You can just simply look around and see for yourself. 
For example, there's videos of Will Smith on YouTube right now talking about when I want something, I know it's already done. In my mind, it's over. There's zero doubt. Time just has to catch up. There's lines in Warren Buffett's biography about how he always knew he was going to be rich and worked from that state throughout his teens until time caught up and he became rich. There's stories of how Steve Jobs used this reality distortion field to make whatever he wanted come to life. There's stories of Kobe Bryant and Muhammad Ali telling people, I know I'm the greatest basketball player, I'm the greatest boxer to ever do it, before anybody ever recognized their talents. There's stories of Mike Tyson's coach conditioning him to know he was the baddest motherfucker alive and to train, box, eat, sleep, fuck, speak from that state of knowing. There's interviews of Kanye West from decades ago saying outlandish shit that all came to life. There's interviews of Conor McGregor documenting how he always knew he was going to be a world champion and one of the biggest stars to ever exist. The examples are all out there if you have the eyes to see. But when it comes to uplifting you, the powers that be lower your mental value through the media and tell you to chase your dream so you can forever keep you on the hamster wheel and operating from a position of lack. But I say, fuck that noise. No amount of money or girls or success or achievement is worth more than you. You want to value yourself above all else. The game of society is set up from the jump to make you feel less than so you spend your entire life chasing and satisfying everybody else's dream besides your own. Fuck that and everybody trying to keep you trapped in on the hamster wheel. Get off the hamster wheel. Debate God consciousness. See how you're playing yourself from outside yourself. Lose the importance you associate with your dream. Get into a state of knowing and live, breathe, eat, sleep from this state and view your dream as if it's already done. So the next question is, how do you get into a state of knowing and view your dream as already done? So now I'll walk you through what I personally do every single day. I do a few things. The first thing I do is I create and review a mindset visualization folder three times a day. It doesn't matter if I'm traveling, chilling on a boat, or working from fancy hotel lobbies. I take my mindset folder with me everywhere I go and review it three times a day. In the morning, after lunch, and before sleeping. What's inside the mindset folder? Is all the creations I want to manifest pulled from step number three. All the intentions I want to bring to life. All the new upgrades I want my character to experience. All the visions I have for my character during this lifetime. All the W's my character has collected to date. All the ways in which my character lived and impacted the world. Everything is inside this mindset folder and it's already now in the past or present tense as if it's already done because it is. Now I've been using this religiously for the last few years and it's insane how quickly I'm able to upgrade characters, bring new attentions to life and experience new adventures. I would love to walk you through exactly how I have my mindset folder over this recording, but honestly, it wouldn't work too well. So I actually offer this for free. So if you're interested in the mindset folder, you can just peep the link in the description and you can just click on it and it'll walk you through a seven day course where I walk you through how I have my mindset folder set up and we just build out yours page by page and also give you all the templates and exercises that you need to build your own. After I have my mindset folder built, I review it three times a day, like I mentioned. And while I'm reviewing the mindset folder, I'll close my eyes for five to 15 minutes and just visualize all that I've read as if it's already done. This means I'll feel the feelings that come with this intensely and let those wash over my entire consciousness. Then I'll express deep gratitude from the heart for this newfound life. I'll stay in this state for a few minutes and truly soak in all the feelings that come with it. Then towards the end of the visualization, I'll spend a few minutes simply visualizing my character going through the process of bringing these attentions to life with extreme confidence and power. Now, most of my dreams are big as fuck and I have no idea how they're going to turn into reality. So most of the time I have no idea what the process is, but that doesn't really matter. I'll just visualize the next logical step. For example, if your intention was to become a seven-figure copywriter, you just visualize your character getting up from the visualization and completing whatever next step that is in alignment with that vision. It could be writing ad copy, to sending out proposals, hopping on a sales call, whatever. So after I've done that, I'll take a deep breath, reactivate God consciousness, and let it all go with indifference. Because remember, you want to be indifferent to your dreams and intentions so you don't put them on a pedestal. Just this alone goes a long way in aligning both your consciousness and your character with the state of knowing, but it's not enough. 
We must stay in a state of knowing and show up to life daily with this state because it's this state that pulls our dream towards us. This is why I also do two more things as a part of my daily routine. The second thing I do is I take the overarching dream or intention or vision I created in step three and I write it out daily 10 to 15 times in the past or present tense as if it's already done. I don't type it, I write it by hand. And I don't write, this is just an example, I don't write, I'm going to be a seven-figure direct response marketer. I do write, I am your full name, and I am a seven-figure direct response marketer who writes multiple six- to seven-figure promotions with ease, grows brands in the health niche and record-breaking speeds, and transforms the lives of hundreds of thousands of customers in the process. I live life 100% on my own terms, travel the world with reckless abandon, and experience the greatest adventure known to man. The key here is you want to put emotion into it. While you write out your dreams 10 to 15 times by hand, the words should fuel your character with emotion, trigger your imagination, and put you in a state of knowing. Now, quick note, I'm not telling you shit just to tell you shit. If you go through my old journal entries from when I was 14 and 15 and 16, you'll find pages and pages full of intentions, such as I am Techdosa and I easily make a certain amount per month. And then I would hit that number, and then I would increase the number, and then again, and again, and again. It's honestly surreal to look back at the journal entries now, because what I intended and held on to as a teen is what I'm living today. So please do this. It really puts you in a state of knowing and keeps you there if you do it daily. But again, that's not all. The last thing I do in step five is I create and stay in a state of knowing by overpowering reality and living the lie, aka what I call staying in delusion land. So after I reviewed my mindset folder and wrote out my intentions, I create the state of knowing and put myself in it. But very quickly, real life starts to rear its ugly head. And I look around and I see a life that's completely different than what I was just imagining and feeling with every fiber of my being. At this point, I have two options. I can either pussy out, forget about all the shit I visualized, leave the state of knowing, and give in to the reality before me, which is what I used to do when I used to live from person consciousness. Or I can activate God consciousness, make my character man the fuck up, stay true to all that I've already visualized, stay in the state of knowing, and overpower reality by aligning my thoughts, words, reactions, habits, actions with what I seek to manifest. Most people struggle to manifest because they struggle to overpower reality. I've learned the hard way to not do that. Instead, I live the lie every minute and stay in what everybody around me calls delusion land. What does this mean? I'll give you some personal examples. In early college, I used to drive a car so shitty that the brakes would stop working randomly whenever it started snowing or raining too much. But in my mind, I wasn't driving a shitty car. Whenever I would go to pick up my girlfriend, I'll tell her, all right, I'm gonna pull up in the Lambo in 10. For in my head, I was actually driving a Lamborghini. So why am I telling you this? Is it because I have a Lamborghini now? And the answer is no, I don't. It's because now I have the money to afford a Lamborghini if I wanted to get one. But I kind of lost that thrill, so I'm over it, at least right now. Another example is I used to sleep on a mattress on the floor for years. Whenever other people would see the mattress on the floor, they'd all look at me like I was cashing welfare checks. But in my head, I wasn't sleeping on a mattress on the floor. I was sleeping on a bed in a room with amazing views of the entire city. This was me overpowering reality. And the reason I tell you this is because now whenever I'm in my DT pad, I wake up in real life to amazing views of the entire city because I'm living on the top floor of a high rise. Whenever people see the view, they're like, holy fuck. But to me, I was so used to overpowering reality that when I moved into this place, I didn't even experience any real difference because I've already lived in this reality for a very long time. Another example. I've only worked a real job for three days of my life, which was flipping burgers at McDonald's. But in early college, before business started taking off, I was flirting with the idea of being a good little boy and doing co-op. So I landed an interview for some startup. Problem was, at this interview, they kept asking me questions that were designed to get me out of delusion. Questions such as, where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in 10? When it's all said and done, what do you want to have done with your life? Walk me through what this next decade of your life is going to look like. My only issue with this is I knew exactly what type of answers they wanted. But the thing is, I would have to leave my state of knowing to give those answers. I would get the job if I did, but I would turn against myself in the process. This to me wasn't worth it. I don't leave delusion land for anybody. I don't even give a fuck about the job in the first place. My mom actually just made me go because she was tired of me punching keyboards all day. So in this situation, 
What I did was I stayed in delusion land and just dropped it like it's hot. I was also hungover as fuck too, so I really didn't care in that moment. So I just told him straight up. I didn't tell him my dream. I didn't tell him my intention. I didn't tell him my goal. But I told him things that were in alignment with delusion land. Then I just watched the interviewer's mouth drop. What? I beg you pardon? I remember the CEO saying. So I just repeated it with a straight face. And at that moment, I knew I totally fucked up that interview. You need to leave. But I left their offices in a state of knowing and high as a kite, which was the most important thing for me. Then I got home, got a call a couple days later from my co-op advisor, and she said something along the lines of, The interviewer called me and said you had a great resume, amazing experience, but your attitude is not workspace friendly. You're not realistic, your head's in the clouds. And I remember this. She said the real world is going to give you a very big reality check. So for that reason, they're not going to give you the job. I remember even responding to her like with just laughter and just saying like, oh, thank God. And she was like, what? And I was just like, I can't work for nobody that's trying to get me out of delusion. Of course, she didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. But the reason I'm telling you the story is because X years later, guess what ended up happening? That company that I interviewed for, their startup failed. And truth be told, to me, it wasn't very surprising because good luck trying to launch a startup without living in delusion land. Meanwhile, what ended up happening to my life was quite the opposite. I was living exactly what I told that lady I was going to be living. Now, granted, it didn't happen in the exact same time frame that I predicted, but fuck it, it was close enough. Such is the power of delusion land. You have to align your entire fucking being with your intentions and dreams and view them as already done and stay in that state and not let anybody, not your mom, your girlfriend, your dad, your sister, your brother, a stranger, take you out. Stay in delusion land and live the lie. Other ways you can live the lies by bringing pieces of your ideal life to your daily experience now. You want to do this as much as possible. For example, if you want a Lambo, go test drive one. Feel the car, watch videos about it, color your entire consciousness with it, and view it as if it's already done. If you want the lifestyle of the rich and famous, go work from fancy hotel lobbies. Grab drinks at the nicest restaurant in town. Save up and get a first-class ticket, and just put yourself in that environment. If you want to build a successful business, chop it up with successful entrepreneurs and view these guys as your new friends because the dream of building a successful venture is already done. If you want a home in the hills, go for a cruise in the neighborhood and view it as if it's already done. And a personal example of how I'm applying this currently is right now, one of the places I live in is on the top floor and has amazing views of the entire city. But I always love to keep dreaming bigger because this entire thing is just a fucking game and I don't take none of it seriously. Not really attached to any of this shit. I was just as happy as sleeping on the mattress floor because I activated God consciousness and I have the journal entries to prove it. But next to my place right now is a killer building with the penthouse like a gazillion stories higher with panoramic 360 views of the entire city. I saw images of it online and it's breathtaking. The cost of this penthouse is like $10 million. So what am I going to do? I'm going to schedule an appointment with the realtor for a viewing. Then I'm going to show up like I own the place, because I already do, and cement all the visuals in my mind. I'm not going to take pictures and jerk off to them. Fuck that. Remember, don't attach too much importance to your dream or put it on a pedestal. I'm just going to walk in like I'm coming home. The realtor is going to be so clueless that he's not even going to know that he's in my house showing me my home. But I will know because I live in delusion land, and that's why I will live in that home if I still want it once I get a free $10 million to throw at it. So this is how it works. Most of society lives in the real world, but I don't even know what the fuck the real world means. I live in delusion land. Remember, you have to follow this in order to see results. You can't be depleting your energy by day, jerking off to porn, and then enter delusion land at night. Nah, bro, you gotta make it your whole life so you can start to paint life consciously. One thing I should also point out is a good way to know if you're living in delusion land is by applying the following test. If your dream was to fall into your lap right now, would you experience any real difference in your state of being? If you're actually living in a state of knowing, then your vibe, your energy, your thoughts, your habits, your words should already be in alignment with you living out your dream now, so you shouldn't experience any real difference when it actually happens. This is how you know you're in alignment. I remember, personally speaking, the first time I made, I really made big money in one day, I rolled out of bed, grabbed my phone, saw the number, and didn't think, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. I was just like, cool and got on with the rest of my day like nothing happened, because I was already making that level of money in my mind long before it ever happened in reality. Once it happened, there was no change in my being because I was already living in a state of knowing. So that's how it works. 
99% of people listening to this right now would be overjoyed with excitement and wouldn't know what to do with themselves if their dream fell into their lap right now. And that's exactly why it hasn't yet, nor will it ever if you keep living like that. So that was step number five. Step number six is you want to surrender to the flow of life by letting go control and embracing the real adventure. Once I activate the state of knowing and make myself comfortable in delusion land, I'm usually chilling there with no idea about how what I want is going to come to life. But at the same time, I know it's already done and I just have to receive and experience the steps to make it real. I had no idea how I was going to build a successful business. I had no idea how I was going to make $100, let alone 50k in a single day profit. I had no idea how everything was going to play out. But that's okay. You don't need to know, nor do you need to control the how. This is where a lot of people fuck up. Because their character can't see the how, they sabotage themselves. This is a big mistake. Because here's how reality works, in my opinion. This is just an opinion. Once you start visualizing what you seek and enter delusion land, reality is going to start to reconfigure itself to match your vibration. I know that sounds new agey as fuck, but just work with me for a minute. This could mean people you haven't spoken to in years start hitting you up. You come across new opportunities. You hear and see similar messages and signs from all different sources. And on and on and on. Basically, you're going to start to see a bunch of new paths and opportunities open up to you that align with your intention. Paths you could have never planned or foreseen. Once this starts to happen, your one and only job is to let go of your character's hard grip on life on needing to control life and surrender to the flow of life by moving with it. For life is smarter than you and I, so stop trying to control it. Just let it flow and just move with it. Most people do not have the balls to surrender to life because they let their preferences and labels and likes and dislikes and resistances get in the way. But surrendering is required. This is again why we activate God consciousness so you can simply observe your character and know when he's getting in his or her own way and override it. So the question is, how exactly does this play out in reality? Well, here's a personal example. After I set the intention of building a successful online business as a teenager and embodied that state of knowing, I had no idea how I was going to do it. But I was just receptive to life and trusted life to figure it out. I would just stay in delusion land, keep my eyes open for opportunities and paths that aligned with my intention, and move with those by taking forward action. So that's what I did, and one day I was chilling on the couch late at night when I came across some infomercial. I really liked the way they were advertising the product, and at the time, I sucked at marketing. So I was really drawn to this particular way of advertising. Then something, an itch, an urge, pushed me to investigate further. So I hopped on Google and discovered that this type of marketing was called direct response marketing. Prior to this, I just thought marketing was just brand awareness bullshit, like McDonald's commercials. But once learning about direct response, I was like, holy fuck, this is epic. Then I didn't know what to do, but I just knew to move with life. So I decided to learn all I could about direct response. And I did. That's when I came across copywriting and discovered OGs like Gary Helbert and started studying their work like crazy. While I was doing this, my character was giving me so much resistance, telling me shit like, bro, you got a C minus in English class. What makes you think you can write? Bro, you don't even know the difference between then and then. I've seen the text you send these girls. Bro, fuck sitting home all day writing. Let's go out and crack open some brews with the boys. But luckily, I wasn't identified with my character, so I didn't really give a fuck about what he was saying or thinking. I just let those thoughts come and go while I remained in the state of knowing and moving with the flow of life. By moving with the flow of life, I eventually ended up getting really good at marketing and copywriting, and that's what led me to fulfilling my first intention of building a successful online business. So I share that, again, not to brag, but just to share with you how this process works. I simply set my intention of building a successful online business. Life offered me a path via direct response marketing. I went with it, even though my character resisted and kept saying yes to life. By doing so, life took me directly to my intention and it materialized before me. This wasn't a linear process. Life took me through many ups and downs, but I just kept riding the waves and staying in delusion land and taking forward action and it all came true. So this is all you have to do. You set the intention and you hold it. Life opens up an adventurous path for you and brings it to life. Then you move with it and ride the waves until it takes you to the treasure chest. I don't know why this works this way, but it's insane. Every time I set new intentions and enter delusion land, life quickly starts reconfiguring itself and starts presenting me opportunities that are in alignment with my intention. All I have to do at this point is muster up the balls to act knowing that what I want is already done, and when I do, I emerge victorious. It happens every time. Again, I don't know why this works. I have theories about the how, but that's irrelevant. 
What is irrelevant is in order to succeed and manifest your dreams, you have to give up control over the how and just move, trust life when you spot actions that are in alignment with your vision. Then you want to act while staying in a state of knowing. Don't act to get something. Fuck that. Act like what you seek is already yours and you're just going through the motions. Remove all pressure. Remove all doubt. This may seem hard, but you already do this every single night. This is why I say, and this this sounds like funny as fuck, but it's so true. If you can fall asleep at night, then you already know how to give up control and let life take over. I like to tell people, if you know how to sleep at night, you know how to succeed at life, whether you realize it or not. Now, usually when I tell people this, they're like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? But here's a little experiment. When you fall asleep tonight, pay attention to the process. Before you fall asleep, what do you do? Well, you decide to go to sleep. In other words, you set the intention. Then you prime yourself with the routine to put yourself in a state that is ready for bed, that is ready to sleep. This could involve you brushing your teeth or stretching or meditating or reading or whatever. This is similar to getting into a state of knowing when it comes to manifestation. Then what do you do next? Do you sit there and plan exactly what time you're going to fall asleep, how much REM sleep you're going to get, what you're going to dream about? Fuck no. Instead, you jump in bed, close your eyes with just a small forward action, you give up control over the whole process, and you surrender to life, and you let sleep come to you. You don't force anything. You embody the state of sleepiness, relax, and sleep eventually finds you. This, in my opinion, is exactly how manifestation and success works too. The more you try to fight and claw your way to success, the more you suffer because you just keep getting in your own way since you're taking actions that usually aren't rooted in a state of knowing, but a state of lack. And you can even see this with sleep too. For example, have you ever had a big day the next morning or a head full of worries? It's hard to fall asleep on those days, isn't it? Why is that? It's because you have a mind full of thoughts, you keep getting in your own way, you're struggling to give up control, and your inability to surrender to life is keeping you from falling asleep. That's why. The same shit applies for success. Most people fail, not because they're not talented, not because they're not capable, but because, one, they don't set intention. Two, they don't enter a state of knowing. Or, they enter a state of knowing, but they leave that state at the first threat of opposition. Three, they don't take small forward action. And four, they don't give up control and surrender to life. Instead, what they do is they let their characters' preferences and thoughts and emotions and labels and fears and doubts and resistances call the shots. This is why you hear people all the time saying shit like, I don't feel like doing X today. I'm so tired. I can't put in two hours of deep work. Oh my God, will I succeed or will I fail? And blah, and blah, and blah, and blah, and blah, and blah, and blah. They go. They continue to talk like this. They continue to speak like this. They continue to live from this state. And they continue to chase their dreams from a position of lack. But this doesn't end too well, does it? You should probably know the answer because it's probably what you've been doing up till now. Now, it's not your fault. I was stuck doing the same shit just like you. But at some time, you must realize that in order to get your life to take off, you can't keep playing the same game. Instead, you have to follow the above steps and embrace the call of adventure, even though your character will want to resist it. The key message is to stop being a slave to your character. Let life or God or higher self or outer intention, whatever you want to call it, take over and deal with the how. All you have to do is set your intentions, stay in delusion land, keep your eyes open, and act forward. This is what makes life so fucking exciting. If you knew how your dreams would materialize, what would be the point of doing anything? It would be so boring. As kids, we have no control over the how, and this is what makes life so fun. But once we grow up, we start acquiring more and more perceived control. We get our fancy degrees, put fancy letters before our names, and think we're somebody who's actually in control. Then we let all these likes and dislikes and preferences and resistance we've accumulated get in between us and the flow of life, which just ends up blocking all our blessings and leaves us either with mediocre success or no success. Is that the life you want? If so, go for it. You're free to create and experience whatever. I have no right or no say in how you live your life. But if that's not what you want, then you must learn to surrender to life and give up control so it can lead you to the promised land. There is no you left to get in the way of you and life. The closer you get to nothingness, the easier it is for life to flow through you and move you towards your intentions with complete ease, because your character is no longer getting in the way of life. Now, I know this sounds fucking crazy as fuck, and I could spend the next hour proving it all to you. 
but I'm not here to prove anything. I have zero desire to convince anybody of anything. All I'm here to do was to simply share the six-step process with you that I've rigorously tested during the last decade and some change. This is the same process that I use every single day. So I just wanted to share this with you and just allow you to play with it for yourself and to really experiment with it yourself. It's a proven process and I know it'll work for you, but I leave it to you to test it for yourself and experience what it makes possible for you. In the meantime, I'll be using the six-step process to move on to bigger and better adventures. And I encourage you to do the same. So that's it for this episode. I just wanted to give you an audio recording of this thread. Those were the six steps. If you want the full document, you can peep the link in the description. If you want the link to the mindset folder, the link will also be included. And that's it for this episode. I hope you're having an amazing week and I hope you're having an amazing life. Cheers. And I'll catch you in the next one. Your friend, Tetch.